It's the Martin Show. Hello and welcome to the Marty Show. Today we're going to talk about Weird World, a fantasy series created by Dog Mensch and Mike Plug. It ran intermittently and under various forms from 1977 until 1986. Although it first appeared as a short black and white story titled An Ugly Mirror on Weird World in December 1975 in the magazine Marvel Super Action. This first issue follows the adventures of an elf named Tyndall of Clarn, who is sent on a quest to slay the very heart of evil. He journeys into the region of Shadow, where he fights many creatures and ends up finding a big egg. The egg hatches and contains a female elf. He then realizes that the evil he was sent to slay was in fact very similar to him. The series then continued on in the color comic book Marvel Premiere number 38 in October 1977 as a single issue story. Unfortunately, Mike Plug left the title early on during production of a follow up halfway through the planned 60 page tale. He was then replaced by the great John Buscema, and the story was published as a 106 page epic as the three part Warriors of the Shadow Realm in Marvel Super Special number 11 to 13 in 1979. It contained amazing art with fantastic airbrushed colors. In my case, this is where I was first exposed to Weird World and possibly to John Buscema's art. In the early 80s, it was published by French publisher Artima as Le Royaume des Ombres, and somehow someone had the good sense to gift me that book. The book contained only the first part or maybe the first part and a half of the three-part story and unfortunately that was as far as it went for me. 40 years or so later I finally got to read most of it and I even managed to find a Marvel premiere issue that precedes it and what came later. Doug Mensch and John Buscema returned to Weird World in 1982, this time within the pages of Epic Illustrated starting with issue 9 and then 11 to 13. The art is slightly different this time. It's got a more pen and ink with watercolor feel, but it is still great. Finally, Mike Plug returned to art duties with a new story published in 1986 within the pages of Marvel Fanfare number 24. Unfortunately, he just drew the first issue of 3 and was replaced by Pat Broderick, who while not a bad artist by any means, wasn't exactly the best fit to conclude the story, at least in my opinion. It also seemed like the first part was part of what Plug had already begun work on in the late 70s, as this is a direct follow-up to the Marvel premiere issue. Also, the character Mudbutt looks entirely different here. And that was it for this incarnation of Weird World. Marvel kind of made a return to the title in 2015, but that was a totally different beast. And once again, in my opinion, it doesn't have all that much to do with the early comics, which were, in part at least, a riff on Lord of the Rings, while the new issues were more akin to something like Conan the Barbarian. These are the issues I currently own. We're going to have a look at them individually. So here's issue number 38 of Marvel Premiere, the Weird World issue. And here we have Marvel Fanfare number 24 with drawings by my my plug as well. So this is where Pat Broderick comes in and you can see that it looks pretty different right off the bat. The interior art is even more different and this is the third and last issue of Marvel Fanfare. So this is the issue that put Weird World on the map, so to, so to speak, um, albeit for a pretty short period of time. Um, You can see very, very nice artwork here on the cover. And even when you open the book, the artwork is still very impressive. 
especially if we think of comics from the, the late 70s. It's uh, pretty different looking from most of what you could find at that time, especially in mainstream comics. And uh, the first part is pretty much of a, a retelling of what was previously published in black and white form. Uh, that is how Tyndall was asked by dwarves to kill the, the heart of evil. And that's uh, where he finds the, um, the egg that contains another elf in it. And she, becomes his com she becomes his companion from then on. And the story doesn't really get going until a bit later. First, they fight a sea serpent, a similar one to what you see on the cover. And uh, then they meet uh, an evil sorcerer who wants to stay forever young. He is um, in love with one of his prisoners. And he wants to regain his youth. And the way to regain your youth is to kill a dragon so what he does is uh, he basically forces Tyndall to uh, to go on a mission to kill that dragon but before that he turns um, candles into some kind of molten men and they uh, bring Tyndall to him and then he is forced to go to Karn to kill the dragon and Karn is his birthplace and it happens to be some kind of floating island and uh, of course he has no idea on how to get there uh, but the sorcerer sends him with a piece of land a flying piece of land and he uh, lands on the the floating island interestingly the shadow of the floating island is where evil dwells so he lands on the island, and uh, as soon as he does, he um, sees um, someone who is being held hostage, a bit similarly to the lady who is uh, the, the evil sorcerer's uh, slave. In fact, she looks very, very similar, and she turns into a sea serpent, <laughs> And the sea serpent gets into a fight with the dragon that Tyndall is supposed to kill. And then um, he kills the dragon, returns to the sorcerer. And the twist here is that the sorcerer's slave also turns into a sea serpent. Everything ends happily for our friends, the elves. And here's uh, an ad for Orca. Not a bad movie. And that's it for this issue. It's pretty simple, don't you think? And here's the first issue of uh, Marvel Fanfare. I mean, the first Weird World issue of Marvel Fanfare. And we've got nice drawings here again by Mike Plug. And the paper quality is way better here. Although, again, almost to the detriment of the artwork at hand. I don't think it was conceived to be published with that level of detail on the page. And we are introduced here to Mudbutt, who looks completely different from what we, uh, we are used to in the other stories. Somehow he was completely redesigned, probably by John Buscema. But this is the Mike Plug version. And here the story is, uh, in all honesty, not all that interesting. It's my least favorite of all the, the weird world stories. It, it has to do with a sword and uh, it's split in two parts. And again, a wizard wants to to uh, get that sword and 
Tyndall and his friends kind of get um, in his way. There isn't much to it again as far as story the story goes. Um, but the artwork is still fantastic. I love it. I love the colors and yeah, my plug is one of the greats. Then we have some illustrations here, one by Pat Broderick and another one by John Buscema. And then we have a, a Marvel story right here. It has to do with a, a poker game and the death of Captain, Captain Marvel. And here's Marvel Fanfare number 25. And this is the first of two issues with art by Pat Broderick. Doug Minch is still writing the story. And we uh, we pick up with the evil wizard and uh, his evil plan to take possession of the sword. You can really see a big difference in art. It's just a guess, but I think many years separate the first issue here and this one. I think it was done years later. And uh, it's important to mention that this happens. It's actually um, a follow-up to the Weird World story. Um, the John Busema issues actually happen after this so it's a prequel of sorts, but it was published years later. There are some cool panels here and there. Actually, the more I look at it, the more it kind of grows on me. Here it has nothing to do with Weird World, but it's uh, artwork by Dave Sim. And uh, he's got a really nice uh, Howard the Duck right there. I love it. And Shang-Chi. And here's his Moon Knight and Cyclops. It's really cool. I love it. And here's Iron Man who's passed out drunk. Basically, he looks dead on this picture. And here's a, another story, I think. Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, I didn't read it, so I can't really tell you much about it. It uh, seems to be pretty much typical Marvel stuff. And one more drawing here by Pat Broderick. It's dated 1979, so years before this was published. And here's issue number 26, the last one ever featuring these characters. And somehow, maybe it's because of the, the inker here, or the inkers, it seems to be two people. Uh, I'm not familiar with them, but um, somehow it looks better. Um, especially here, if you look at the faces, they're a bit similar to Mike Plug's uh, designs, a bit more than in the, the previous issue. And this came out, I think, two months apart. Like each issue was like two. You know, there's a. It was not uh, not published monthly, as far as I know. And they um, fight off the wizard, and somehow the the wizard unleashes an army of goblins, and they they jump on him, they attack him. chaos ensues but somehow they they uh, manage to defeat him by throwing him in his mirror but actually he goes through the mirror and uh, falls off the castle but evil never really dies and uh, you see a bird in the end and that's probably the wizard escaping to a safer place and here we have a Captain America story 
I didn't read it either yet, so I can't really tell you much about it, but um, it's got some pretty nice drawings. I, I don't really dislike it. As far as the story is concerned, I really cannot tell you anything, though. got an interesting bad guy <laughs> and one more drawing here not sure who the, the, the drawer is and that's it for the last issue of Marvel fanfare if this video made you interested in picking up weird world well there's a trade paperback out there which contains all of the stories um, Unfortunately, it's out of print, but you can probably find it here and there. So keep your eyes open and pick it up if you find it. I think it's it's worth a look, especially the John Buscema stories. And, of course, the mic uh, plug ones for the artwork. Well, that's it for now. So thank you very much for watching and see you again. Thanks for watching. Uh,